Okay, this is an introduction to algebra. Please make sure that you have your video notes. There's a lot of terms that you're gonna to need to know, a lot of note taking that you're gonna to have to do. Pause the video when necessary so that you can stay caught up in your note taking. Okay, what is algebra? I'm sure you have probably already heard of algebra. Maybe you have older siblings or family members that have taken algebra and have told you a little bit about it. Maybe you're scared of algebra. I think algebra is fun and I hope that you're going to find it fun as well. But before we can begin our unit, we need to go over some important terms and concepts. The first one, what exactly is algebra? Algebra is a mathematical language of letters, symbols, and rules that is used to find the unknown. That's all it is. It's just like regular arithmetic, except you still have the same operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. But this time, we include an unknown value, something that you have to look for, you have to solve for. And we use letters to represent the unknown value. So a variable. A variable is a letter used to represent an unknown number. The value of the variable may change. Okay, so if you don't know what a number is, then you substitute a variable or a letter to represent that number in your algebraic expression or equation. And it can be any letter. However, all of the other all of the letters have to be lowercase. Your uppercase or capital letters are usually reserved for formulas. For example, the capital A. That it represents the formula for area. Capital V represents the formula for volume. Okay, so capital letters are mainly reserved to represent formulas. Lowercase letters are going to be reserved for your unknown. Those are your variables. And I need to talk to you a little bit about the variables that you use. The most common variable used in algebra is x. Well, if you were to see this x, what would you think it is? Would you automatically think of it as the variable x? Or would you think, oh, that's a multiplication symbol? A lot of you would say multiplication, right? Because we're so used to seeing x to represent multiplication. This is why when we use multiplication with algebra, we use the other symbols. We use the dot. We use the parentheses to represent multiplication. Okay, so be very careful with your x or with your multiplication. Start using the dot or the parentheses to represent multiplication. Another one is, if you're writing really fast, what is that? Is that a 2 or is that a Z? Okay, it'd be hard to tell if you're going back and looking at your problem. That's why, and you probably have noticed this with me, whenever I write a Z, I put a line through it. Some letters could represent numbers. So you're going to have to start writing your letters in a way where you can tell them apart from, another, from a number. Um, another example would be this. If you're writing really fast, is that an S or is that a 5? So what I do when I make my S is I put a little curly Q like that and I know that it's an S and not a 5. Another one is this. Is that a plus sign or is that a T? Well, you could write your T like that. So there are different ways that you can write your letters so that they don't look like a rushed number. So be very careful when you're writing your variables. Okay, a constant. A constant is a specific number whose value does not change. Okay, with our variables such as a, y, x, b, n, etc., they can stand for any number in that expression. But a constant does not change. Basically, a constant is just a number, 5. Can, does the value of change 5? If I were to write 5, would it 
equal really 10? No, five is gonna always be five. That value is not gonna change. Same thing for 100. The value of 100 will not change. 100 is always 100. The same is true for a fraction. One half is always one half. Same thing for a decimal. Five tenths is always five tenths, even negatives. A negative three will always be a negative three. The value will not change. And then operations. Your operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents. And this little symbol right here that looks like the division is not, this is actually represents the square root. And I put it in here just to show it to you. And this is something that you're gonna work more with in seventh grade. Okay, we've already talked about this before, so let's quickly go through it. Multiplication and division can be written in multiple ways. We want to get rid of this x. It's okay if you have two numbers like 7 times 4 to use the x in between it, but if you have a variable or two variables, let's not use the x. Instead, use the dot, or you can write it next to each other. If you have a number next to a letter or two letters next to each other, that means multiplication. You could write one of the numbers or letters in parentheses or both of them in parentheses because when you have a number or letter touching parentheses with no symbol, no operation symbol shown, that means multiplication. The division, a lot of times you're still going to see the regular division symbol. Sometimes you'll see a, a backslash, but most of the time you're going to start seeing the fraction bar the fraction being used to represent division. So anytime you see something in fraction format, always think of this fraction bar as meaning division. All right, an algebraic expression is an expression that contains one or more variables with one or more operation symbols. Okay, so what are some examples? Right here, make sure you write this down. 150 plus y. Okay, the 150 is your constant. Okay, it's the number that does not change. The value does not change. Y is the variable. Okay, this is the unknown. And it can change. And then you have the operation symbol, a plus. Okay, here, W minus N, there's a variable. There's actually two variables, and there's an operation. 2x. This is also an expression because this means multiplication. Even though the symbol's not there, it's understood that it's multiplication. 2 times x. So what are some non-examples? 15. 15 is just a number. It's a constant. There's no operation, so therefore it's not an expression. 12 minus 7. Although this is an expression, because it has a number and it has an operation, it's a numerical expression. There's no variable here, so it's not considered algebraic. It's just a numerical expression. The same thing here. 9 sixteenths, same as saying 9 divided by 16. It's numerical expression. There are no variables. You could have this, 150 plus y equals 200. Okay, this is an equation because of the equal sign. It's not an expression. And we're going to talk more about equations in a couple of weeks. So let's take a closer look at the parts of an algebraic expression. Okay, these are very important to know. We're going to be using them. And as a mathematician, when you're talking about expressions, you need to be able to, to use the correct terminology for the different parts. So terms. Terms are the parts of an expression that are separated by plus or minus signs. So if we go through, let's highlight these. This is a plus sign, this is a plus sign, plus sign, and plus. And they could be subtraction signs. These just happen to be all plus signs. So terms are what's in between them. 12 is a term. What kind of term is 12? It's a constant. 3y is a term. 4x is a term. This is saying there's three y's. This is saying there's four x's. Two y is a term. And here's another constant, four. So how many terms does this expression have? It has one, two, three, four, five terms. Okay, coefficients. Coefficients are the numbers that are multiplied by at least one variable. 
coefficients basically tell you how many of the variables you have. So they only go with very variables. This 12 is a constant, it's not a variable. But this 3y, this is a variable. The 3 is the coefficient. It's the number that tells you how many y's you have. You have three y's. Okay, 4x. Okay, the coefficient would be the 4. The 4 says, hey, there are four x's. And the 2y, the coefficient would be the 2. It tells you how many y's there are. There are two y's. 4, there's no coefficient to 4. 4 is the number, yes, but it's not attached to a variable. So the coefficients are multiplied by the variables. They're attached to the variable. And they tell you how many of that variable you have. You have three y's, you have four x's, you have two y's. Those are coefficients. And the last term you need to know are like terms. Like terms are the terms with the same variable or variables raised to the same power. Okay, so if I go through here, I have a y, okay, so I'm going to highlight this term. Do you see any other terms with a y? Yes, right here, 2y. These are like terms. And if you have a like term, you can combine them. You can add them together. If I have three y's, I can add that to two y's. And how many total y's would I get? Five. You add the coefficients, the three plus the two. Three y's and two y's give you five y's. Okay, we have the term of four x's, but are there any other x's? No. Okay, so there is no like term. Another, technically like terms have to have the same variable, but we also really consider constants to be like terms. 12 and four, 12 and a positive four, because you can combine them. Okay, all constants you can combine, 12 plus four would give you the 16. So you could actually simplify this expression by combining your like terms. If I combine my constants, I'm going to get 16, plus combine my y terms, the three y's and the two y's, 5y, and then there's nothing to combine with the 4x, so it stays a 4x. So we simplified this expression. We went from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms to how many terms? To the 16 the 5y and the 4x to three terms. So if you have like terms, you can combine them together. But remember, for them to be like terms, they have to have the same variable. Constants are also considered like terms. You can combine the constants together. And that's it. You're ready for part two.